So before we start looking at applications and kind of looking at APEX, um, the result of the APEX framework and architecture, we're going to talk a little bit about kind of what this architecture is, how it works. And it's very simple, or I guess it can be very simple. Uh, everything starts from the web browser. You're going to have uh, your user enter a URL, and that URL is going to communicate to something. Uh, it's likely going to be um, either a, a web server or uh, it will be the ORDS, Oracle RESTful Data Service Listener. And ultimately what's going to happen is that request is going to be forwarded into the database. Once we make it into the database, uh, kind of control has been handed over to Apex. Uh, at that point, Apex is going to query all that metadata that you've configured uh, by you know, building your application. And the end result is going to be a, a web application that's sent back to your browser or a web page that is sent back to your browser. So uh, the, the driving point here that I, I, I really want to emphasize is that your application logic runs in the database because Apex is PL SQL, primarily PL SQL. Uh, and there are no files. There's no HTML file or uh, SQL files or things that you have to write. Um, it's all stored as metadata in the database. So just like you have uh, your dictionary tables for your schema. So if you want to, you know, get all of your uh, your tables in your schema, you'd select star from user tables. You can do the same thing for Apex if you want to get all of your applications you can select star from Apex applications. There are many different ways in which you can configure this web listener, um, and they're kind of listed out here, uh, and that's for something that's uh, probably uh, for your uh, DBA and systems people uh, to kind of talk to you about and uh, kind of get configured. Okay, so after Apex has been configured, uh, it's been installed into your database, and everything's been set up, and you want to build your first application. There's the first thing that the first thing that you need to do is you have to set up what's called a workspace, and a workspace is basically um, a place where you build applications. So, and usually how this works. Um, there are many different ways which you can configure this, but I find that I, I've seen installations where um, you can have a workspace per department. So, for instance, you could make an HR workspace and you have all your HR applications. Maybe you have uh, an accounting workspace and you have all your accounting applications. Uh, so you could do it that way. Uh, I've also seen implementations where um, you just create one workspace and you just throw all your applications in there. It's totally up to you how you want to configure it. But the key thing that I, I, I want to emphasize here is that a workspace does, in and of itself can't access data or, or get to your, uh, your business data. The only way that, it, uh, that you can get to business data is through your schema. And so what you do is you associate schemas to a workspace. So in other words, here I have schema one associated to workspace one. So maybe I have an HR schema and I'm gonna associate that to my HR workspace. Maybe I have an accounting schema, I'm gonna associate that to my accounting workspace. But I also wanna illustrate that you can associate multiple schemas to any workspace. So um, let's say it's not uncommon that there are some global schemas that maybe have utilities uh, that just kind of help your uh, kind of quality of life development uh, as a developer. Or maybe there's just data that you want to share across multiple workspaces. Um, so you can do that. And not illustrated in this picture, uh, it is possible uh, to have a schema associated to multiple workspaces. So uh, if you have uh, say schema three, say this is my global schema that has lots of utilities that just make my life easier as a developer. 
Well, this schema three can be associated to workspace one, two, and three, or any combination thereof. Really, it's just a many-to-many -many relationship under the hood. The other thing that workspaces do uh, is they allow you to kind of section off your developers. So um, if you only want one developer to have access to the HR workspace and HR application because it contains sensitive information, well, you can allocate that one developer to that workspace. And so what that means, what that should also kind of tell you is that workspaces have their own sets of users or individual sets of users. Um, some of the maybe systems people in this group or DBAs in this group, uh, that might uh, raise some alarms and you might say, oh man, we have to manage all these users independently. That's just the default configuration. Um, it possible to authenticate to these workspaces through LDAP or Active Directory, um, but uh, that is something that you have to configure afterwards.